지금부터 관광 산업의 경제적 효과, 한중일 다자 협력 강화를 통한 From now on, we will begin this session on the travel and tourism's contribution to economic growth. So how multilateral cooperation of South Korea, China, and Japan can enhance peace, security, and future prosperity. I'm MC for this event, Kim Jin-ha. Let me introduce you the moderator for this session, Mr. Yongook Chun. He graduated from the Seoul National University. He has a doctor's degree uh, from the MIT and for the past 40 years, he has worked as a consultant regarding the business management. He is now the invited professor at the Seoul National University Business School. He has worked with Hynix, Hyundai Motors, and Samsung. He is now director of the Korea Business Management Research Center as well. Let me now introduce and let me now turn over my mic, Mr. Chun. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Okay, welcome to our session. And uh, uh, this will be um, the, the tourism and travel industry and contribution to our, our economy. Uh, Today's session is, uh, in a sense, is very important because uh, tourism has a certain uh, significant contribution in human life. Uh, there are three uh, major contribution of the tourism industry. And one is that uh, it is uh, uh, one of the healing industry uh, for the humankind. So we need really healing these times, especially with the COVID-19. And so uh, this uh, tourism industry is really one of the key industry for uh, you know healing purpose of the human being. The second uh, important aspect of the, the tourism industry is, is eye-opening experience for people. So whenever we travel overseas, uh, this is really a great opportunity for uh, our people to explore the something new. Okay, and the third you know contribution of the uh, the tourism industry. It is really uh, helping us to be creative uh, because of the, the diversity of the uh, different uh, geography of the world and uh, this uh, tourism tourism industry is really helping people uh, to be creative so in this sense uh, this industry is something that we have to explore in the future uh, especially with the uh, the fading of the COVID-19 uh, I think that the realignment and the rebuilding of tourism industry is one of the most important uh, aspect for uh, economic recovery in the future. And the three countries in Asia, the Japan, Korea, and China, may have to collaborate uh, to rebuild this the, the, uh, a bit faded, you know, the tourism industry. So this is the right time, and we have the right speakers from China, Japan, and Korea. So we are very lucky uh, to have this session with this uh, very privileged and uh, uh, you know, capable experts from the three different countries. As uh, a moderator, uh, one of my role is that to keep the time. So we have to finish all this session in 80 minutes. So I'll just spend five minutes for this opening. Then uh, each speaker, uh, I'll try to allow them 15 minutes each. So we have four speakers, so they will uh, spend about an hour uh, for uh, four sessions. So uh, I just request each speaker to keep the time. The your maximum allowed time is 15 minutes only. So if you go over that, then the whole session is in dis disarray. So please uh, keep the time. So after we have the four speakers, uh, including discussion, uh, then uh, I'll invite uh, the questions from the floor or from the uh, online, and then I will spend about 10 minutes for the uh, uh, you know general discussion Q&A sessions. So that is my uh, time plan, and uh, I need the cooperation of the speaker, main speaker, and the sweet discussion. And today is very unique. Uh, we are running this session in the dual mode. So offline with a limited you know, audience and then uh, uh, on the Zoom uh, with the online. So I think that we have two, speak, uh, two discussions from uh, Japan and China uh, on the Zoom. So that is uh, the unique experience for today. 
let me at the beginning let me introduce uh, uh, who we have today as uh, main speaker and the uh, three uh, discussion so maybe uh, it's, uh, it's the right time for me to introduce uh, our first speaker uh, who is really uh, uh, the main you know contributor to this whole session and uh, uh, she is from Jeju Hala University Pro uh, professor Han Ju Yeon uh, I think she is really the the real expert in this field when I look through her uh, career uh, she really had a shining record uh, she went to the best schools in tourism and the best jobs in in the field and uh, when we talk about the hospitality industry well, we normally talk the best schools as uh, University of Nevada and uh, the Cornell University and Penn State University she went all three of them all together from bachelor's uh, master's and PhD and she even taught at the uh, Houston University uh, which is also very famous in the hospitality industry so she got everything and uh, she also worked for Sheila and uh, Ruffles in Singapore and Orbis of Asia so uh, she has really envious record of the career and uh, so here is uh, Professor Han and uh, you have 15 minutes to talk okay Thank you for the great introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk in this Jeju Forum. Uh, I will be presenting today about the economic importance of COVID-19 on travel and tourism industry, and also discuss about some of the new th trends that we will need to look into during the recovery process. Then um, we'll explore some recommendations on how Korea, China, Japan can eventually overcome this crisis. Uh, okay. So in 2020, coronavirus pandemic started influencing our economy and the global world is still suffering from this crisis. Travel and tourism industry is one of the sector that is suffering the most. According to the World Tourism Organization, international tourists declined significantly due to this fear of coronavirus and travel restriction. According to the World Travel and Tourism Council, in 2019, 10.4% of the global GDP contributed by the travel and tourism industry, which equal to 9,170 billion US dollars. However, in 2020, the share of this industry dropped to 5.5%, which equal to 4,671 billion US dollar. Within one year, global GDP contributed by travel and tourism industry dropped 49%, which equals to 4,498 billion US dollars. As tourism industry is a labor intensive industry, many people lost jobs because of the downfall of travel and tourism industry. This downfall decline of this uh, industry triggered approximately 61.6 million people to lose their jobs. And in 2019, when 334 million people worked in this industry, which equals to one in every 10 jobs. However, in 2020, only 272 million were employed by this industry. What is worse, is that SMEs, which stands for small, medium enterprises, were the ones that suffered the most. Okay, so let's look at the performance of each region. 
as you can see, all the region had dropped. Um, North America dropped by 42%, South America by 41%, Europe by 51%, Africa by 49%, Middle East by 51%, and Asia Pacific in total was 54%. Uh, when we divide this Asia Pacific area into more detail, we can see that uh, Oceania dropped by 45%, South Asia by 37%, Southeast Asia by 53%, and most importantly, Northeast Asia, where Korea, China, Japan is located, it dropped by 56%. So we can see that there was a huge impact in the Southeast Asia. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, for the Northeast Asia. When we look into these three countries, China, Japan, South Korea, you can see that the largest percentage GDT share in 2019 was by China, which was 11.6%. However, in 2020, it dropped to 4.5%. That is 59.9% decline in GDP share. In Japan, in 2019, it record, recorded 7.1% of GDP. And in 2020, it dropped to 4.7%. While for Korea, in 2019, it was 4.4% while it dropped to 2.4% in 2020. Also, as mentioned earlier, there were ma many jobs lost due to this coronavirus and decline in this industry. 19.5% of the travel and tourism industry jobs were lost in 2020 in China, and 5.1% of the jobs were dismissed in Japan, and 6.2% of the travel and tourism industry jobs were lost in South Korea. And um, I'm not gonna go into details, but I wanted to point out how important it is for China, Korea, and Japan to work together to boost this travel and tourism industry. Um, as the success of this uh, international tourism is directly linked with each other, it's very important to work together, Korea, China, and Japan. We need to understand the upcoming trends and the changes that we'll face after coronavirus pandemic. And you can see the inbounds and outbounds for each country. And mostly, China for China, South and Japan is included. And for Japan, China and South Korea is included. And for South Korea, China and Japan plays a big role. So what will be the new trend? First, it is expected that the travel industry, um, there will be a significant changes in the consumer behavior. There will prefer familiar, predictable, trusted, and low list risk destinations. Non-crowded areas such as beach destinations, small towns, rural areas will be preferred, and destinations with outdoor activities will be favored. Internet usage will increase when travelers make reservations or search for information. Because they do not want to take that risk and also want to optimize their limited travel opportunity health and hygiene will be another important in the new era. Travelers will look for destinations that implement safe travel protocols. Extensive communication regarding health and hygiene information will be crucial. For example, travelers will expect trusted authorities to provide timely and accurate information prior to and during their travel. Also, another big trend and is digitalization. Travelers are increasingly using online platform for travel recommendations and inspirations. Especially for the young generations, 
videos, and pictures will be critical. During their trip, travelers prefer technologies to minimize physical interactions. And as they are using more online um, sources to search for information and to book, uh, book hotels and destinations, um, they're going to put more private information online. And then travelers will become more sensitive to cyber risk and data privacy. Uh, travelers favor destinations with international airports ports having strict inter entrance procedures, reliable health testing, and tracing. So digital identity and biometric identification is becoming more important to them. Also, another topic that is emerging is sustainability. There will be an increased awareness of environmental sustainability, including improvements in air quality and pollution, wildlife protection, and ocean preservation. Studies show that consumers are thinking more about environment since COVID-19. Also, people are more aware of heritage preservation. And it's not just about environmental issues. They're also interested in issues such as anti-racism movements, reducing poverty, inequality, and support for diversity will impact tourist choice for travel destination. After understanding these new trends or upcoming trends, we need to figure out how to survive this pandemic and plan for the future. We need to boost the travel and tourism industry for the three countries, South Korea, China, and Japan. Although it is a challenging period for travel and tourism industry, for all three countries, there are positive future opportunities for Korea, China, and Japan. Uh, first, we can utilize the Olympic Games that will be held in Tokyo and Beijing in 2020 and 2022. And for Korea, the rise of entertainment business will be able to help tourism industry in the future. In order to prepare and get ready for these opportunities in the future, travel and tourism industry needs to, um, needs to do and reduce uncertainty. Communication and coordination uh, between countries for travel restriction is important. Standardized contact tracing and testing requirements are needed and strengthening businesses and encouraging consumers to plan their trips to the countries among Korea, Japan, China will be important. Implementing health and safety standard among three countries will be a key as well. Sharing key learnings about health and safety issues and incorporating standardized health and safety stamps to businesses such as hotels, restaurants, and tourist destinations will be very important. If the three countries have a standardized uh, protocol for health and safety standards, indiv individual customers do not have to verify their protocol and it will be much easier for them to trouble, uh, travel and will be very clearly communicated. Communicating accurate and timely information with travelers um, is very important for these destinations as well. And since tourists are looking for non-crowded area, it is a good opportunity for each country to promote secondary and rural destinations. However, in these destinations, they need to ensure health and safety. And also the government should invest in destination marketing in these de de destinations. Also, this is a very important topic that everybody discusses about. Uh, travelers from the three countries can stimulate the earliest regrowth of travel and tourism industry by facilitating digitalization. And we need to corporate, cooperate in this digital marketing and promotions in order to boost the three countries' travel industry. 
um, collab collaborate uh, with solutions to digitize safety and health information is important. So to incorporate customized database using the big data and use QR codes to efficiently track travelers' route by mobile devices will be critical. And we need to make it capable for tourists to do self um, reporting on medical symptoms wherever they go in these three countries. For um, also, it is important to encourage travelers to use digital identity and implement biometric passports. We can use new technologies in this uh, digitalization. For example, a lot of us are talking about uh, metaverse right now, which is a virtual space. So to provide information, people are looking for information through online sources. So um, platforms like Metaverses will be a good platform to use. Also, in order to reduce uncertainty in the secondary cities, cities, implementing digital infrastructure in secondary cities and rural destination is critical. Increase contactless travel experience, which includes payment options, which is a must nowadays. Lastly, we need to embrace sustainability, raise awareness about environmental issues. Korea, China, and Japan should plan regular meetings to input collective actionable plans, share technologies to build carbon neutral travel and tourism infrastructures. Also share knowledge about sustainability and develop training programs is important to embrace sustainability. Government should have policies and procedures in place to promote sustainable tourism. For example, they should align incentives for businesses that follow sustainable proactive practices. Um, although we, the travel and tourism industry is facing uh, many challenges, Korea, China, and Japan needs to overcome these challenges and prepare for a new era. We will need to come together and think about how we can lift travel restrictions, restore travelers' confidence, and think and plan about the future in travel and tourism. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much, uh, Professor Han, uh, keeping the time 15 minutes. And from her you know, presentation, uh, we got the image of the, we are really in the, uh, <coughs> the uh, changing world. And the three keywords are really important, digitalization, so sustainability, and the health and hygiene are the new keywords. Uh, so this is really a paradigm change in the uh, global tourism industry. So thank you for that, for your insight. And let me invite the second uh, uh, speaker. Uh, he is a uh, uh, discussant from Korea, and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Byung Dong Hun. And uh, let me introduce him um, briefly. Uh, he's a real field expert uh, in the uh, last 30 years. Uh, he worked in the tourism industry and also in the marketing uh, industry. So he worked for the North uh, West Airline and then uh, he worked for the, uh, the Ogilvy, the global uh, marketing companies. And he's now working uh, for Seoul Tourism uh, Organization as executive director. And he's an expert in the MICE and the international uh, traveling. So can I invite you? for 15 minute presentation on the, the Korean side. Sure. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chan. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Don Bian. Uh, I'm the executive director uh, at the Seoul Tourism Organization. It's my big honor uh, to be here to talk about tourism and future prosperity through uh, the mutual cooperation of three countries. In the future, networking between neighboring countries and domestic units will become more important than long distance business tourism. And the number of related business tourism activities will increase. In truth, as a short distance travel destination, 
Korea, China, and Japan are inseparable. Today, I'd like to discuss ways to bring multilateral growth in all three countries through the communal programs in tourism. About 21% of the world tourism expenditure comes from Korea, China, and Japan. The population of the three countries is about 20% of the world's population, and their GDP is also up to 20%. When combined, the three countries occupy 90% of the total volume of economy in East Asia. People-to-people -people exchanges between the three countries exceeded 30 million people in 2018. And the list of common areas requiring a collaborative effort is growing in the fields of economy, finance, and culture, along with environmental issues. South Korea, China, and Japan are the countries with the most frequent tourist exchanges due to their close proximity. If I were to summarize the graph in short, despite the sharp dis decrease due to the pandemic, the proportion of visitors to these two countries is still relatively high. It has been already covered by uh, the Professor Han. So, uh, uh, as we as we all know, uh, the pandemic hit tourism hard. The level of crisis awareness saw the greatest increase in stages nine and ten, with ten indicating temporary or permanent business closure. More than 50% of business in Seoul are uh, on the brink of closure due to the struggling tourism economy. In fact, both at home and abroad, I'm concerned that we are not the only ones suffering. Tourism has entered a new normal era. However, if the three neighboring countries could somehow join forces, we can all move forward and welcome in a future grounded in mutual development. So, I would like to make a few suggestions. Uh, let me skip this page again. According to uh, predictions on travel uh, trend following the pandemic, local travel, individual travel, and leisure travel will experience growth in the short term. Looking over the long term, some anticipated keywords to arise are eco-friendly, low carbon, and wellness. With all that said, I propose connecting local travel for the short term and linking all of our wellness tourism resources over the long term. The sharing economy between each country will also be extended to help develop one-stop tourism services. My first suggestion is to link local tourism in Korea, China, and Japan. These local tourism projects focused on specific small town areas sprang to life after the pandemic with the increased need for the short distance travel. A primary example is Mapomambo in Seoul. It is a project in which local residents of a Mapo district plan a specialized tour of the Mapo area and use it as a business model. Through travel cafes and online platforms, the various tourism experiences, culture, and travel content throughout this region become interconnected. This also promotes growth along, among local residents as tourism specialists. Another example is a village tour in Nowangu area in Seoul again. Starting with the 104 village early alive in 2013, Nowangu is currently operating village tourism programs such as Sancheon Road Stamp Tour and the Gongnungdong Dream Village Tour. Residents are also actively participating in the development of various traditional cultural heritages and tourism resources in Noongu. This helps create an attractive tourism village where the past, present, 
and the future coexist. In China, I will not say in detail about that, but uh, some examples of local tourism would be Gubei Xuijian, located in two hours from Beijing, Tongli next to Shanghai, Wenjiachun in Xi'an, and Lijian Kuchang in Winnan area. I would be very interested to hear more about this and other areas in detail from the distinguished Professor Liu Cheng here. The same goes, to, goes for Japan. Uh, there is Omeshi, only one hour from Tokyo, Wajimashi in Ishikawa-ken, Kamakurashi in Kanakawa-ken, and Yufushi in Oita-ken, uh, to name a few. Again, it would be a pleasure to hear more in detail from the distinguished Professor Harada here. Well, my next suggestion is wellness tourism, which is a rising keyword in the tourism post-pandemic. In fact, wellness was introduced to tourism a decade ago, especially in the field of medical tourism. As its popularity grows, it has also spurred interest in hygiene and safety. Temple stays are one of the main wellness tourism items in Korea. Temples typically offer a rich history and culture of Korean Buddhism, and these experiences leave a memorable impressions for those who are looking for a break from everyday life. They also develop a special connection beyond the barriers of nationality, ethnicity, and culture. Temple stays are available at 141 temples across Korea and have been recognized as a creative and competitive excellent cultural product by the OECD. Creating wellness tourism resources does not necessarily requ require a natural environment. For example, these, ho these hotel facilities in Incheon fuse together the idea of a European style spa with a Korean jimjilbang or sauna. The water plaza boasts the motif of plaza, uh, Piazza uh, San Marco in Italy, covering a total area of about 13,000 square meters, including massage treatment, pool areas, and other facilities. There are also uh, traditional and modern wellness attractions in China. Some examples would be Shaolin Temple in Henan province, Dali in Yunnan, and the Lalu Hotel in Qingdao built using a natural environment, and the world of Astoria Beijing Hotel, which shows the harmony of China's time-honored traditional beauty and modern sophistication. Uh, same goes for Japan with the Hakone Machi in Kanakawa-ken, Kusachi Onsen in Kumma-ken, Mahaina Wellness Resort in Okinawa, uh, and Hotel Mikazuki in Katsura, Wakayama-ken are some of the popular wellness products available. I have shown a few examples of, the, of wellness programs from three countries, but they are only the tip of the iceberg. This variety, variety is endless. Uh, these programs could be also be linked, as I have suggested, suggested previously, with the village programs. Regions with specialized wellness tourism product are to be grouped for mutual exchange in services and discount options. My third suggestion is the expansion of sharing economy services in each country. In Seoul, there is a widely used sharing service called the Taringi. It is a public bicycle service with a total of 37,500 bicycles available and 2,228 rental stations throughout Seoul. Nearly 3 million, or 30% of Seoul's population, actively uses the service. The number of rentals per year is over 23 million, with the average time per rental around out at uh, 30 minutes. It is one of the better examples out there of a model sharing economy service. In China, there is a ride-sharing service called the Didi Chuxing, similar to Uber. There is, there is also an accommodation-sharing service called the Xia Oju uh, that allows people to offer accommodation to people like Airbnb.
In Japan, there is a space sharing service called the Space Market. The key strategy is to introduce new ways to utilize the registered spaces when they are not in use. In addition, Akipa is a parking space sharing service. Those who have a vacant space in their house, apartment, or a business office register and post the space for availability in Akipa. Overall, it's anticipated to be an innovative global service model in tourism to extend these sharing services among our three countries so that travelers can readily use transportation and accommodation facilities. Last but not least, a concerted, so concertative body is to be established to uh, participate cooperation on common issues, opportunities, and difficulties. There is summit planned for tourism ministry leaders of each country to meet. Under governance led by the private sector, this body will work to promote exchange be uh, between both industry and economy communities. Ultimately, the goal is to share risk management know-how to cultivate a mutual capacity in all three countries while encouraging an exchange in policy. Tourism in the new normal era called for the hygiene, quarantine, and safety. Topics such as eco-friendliness and low carbon are also emerging. Uh, through that concertative body I mentioned pre previously, joint systems can be created to share and manage risks in the development of new contract and insurance pr product between the tourism industry and travelers or uh, within the tourism industry itself. At the time of accelerating digital transformation, new platform, business models, and expanded partnerships are more important than ever. It is also possible to jointly develop green tourism programs or contents that are virtually and zero contact. A jointly certified quarantine program can help reassure people visiting tourism spots and facilities. Looking ahead, nature and health will become an important aspect of healing tourism. Of course, it is uh, important to anticipate an increase in nature-friendly tourism activities and to design products that are environmentally sound. Also, providing a visible gauge for tourists to see how much they have contributed to nature conservation following consumption will be essential. And the creation of a kind of eco dashboard, as you see here, uh, can be developed through a joint collaboration. Tourism has been one of the most affected sectors politically, economically, and socially. Yet it has also initiated a breakthrough during these difficult times. There have been many cases where countries are initialized an exchange through tourism and often wind up resolving some of more challenging or political issues. Tourism not only helps individual values and, li and lives evolve, but also impacts the world community once those individuals come together. And I firmly believe that one of the vital ways that Korea, China, and Japan can collectively succeed in obtaining such prosperity is through the dedication of the tourism industry. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Executive Director Bion. Uh, as a field expert, he really uh, uh, proposed very practical suggestions for the uh, uh, sharing knowledge and uh, insight between this, uh, among the three uh, different countries. And uh, uh, two keywords that uh, pop up uh, to my mind is that uh, linking the uh, local tourism among the three different countries and also the wellness programs in the long term among the three different countries. So those are the, uh, the real suggestion and very practical and very useful in the future. Thank you so much for that. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Now uh, I want to open the session to the, uh, uh, the discussion overseas. And so I want you to invite uh, uh, the, uh, 
the president uh, Harada from Japan, uh, who is willing to uh, participate in today's discussions. So let me introduce uh, Professor Harada a bit, and then uh, uh, he will make the 15-minute presentation. And uh, as you know, the uh, Professor Harada uh, is re really a renowned you know, scholar in Japan in sports tourism, and also uh, he has a very uh, leading roles in the field. Uh, he is uh, right now the president of the Osaka University of the uh, Health and Sports Science, and he was a former uh, faculty member of the Waseda University, and he got his PhD from Penn State University, as like uh, Dr. Han, maybe uh, two of them are alumni, eh? I guess. And uh, he's also uh, leading the uh, Japan Sports uh, uh, Alliance, uh, and he's also taking many uh, important jobs and roles in the, uh, uh, throughout the Asia. So uh, I want to welcome uh, Professor Rada. And uh, is he is he ready on the on the Zoom? Okay. Okay, he'll show up. All right. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Rada. Are you ready to make presentation? Oh <coughs> yes, I guess so. Okay, so then uh, you, uh, would you please uh, uh, keep the 15 minutes <laughs> limitation? I want oh, to give you sure. as much time as possible, but we have some limitations. So please spend okay. your 15 minutes and uh, in the full length. Okay. Sure. sure. I try to uh, make my presentation very very tight, so don't worry about it. Okay. So uh, thank you for your kind of, uh, introduction. Can you see my pr uh, PowerPoint? Well, very well. Yeah, clear. Okay, very good. Okay, now I have to start talking about Tokyo Olympic Games. It's right in the corner and uh, uh, people are still suspicious about holding these games, but the uh, government is now, you know, uh, say just the games must go on. So COVID-19 really affects every single place. And uh, still more than 50% of the Japanese people believe that uh, Olympics should be hold uh, with that audience. But the government decided that we just accommodate 50% uh, of capacity. So uh, as a uh, previous speaker already uh, mentioned that the COVID-19 pandemic has spread all over Japan, not only in Japan, but all over the place. Social and physical distancing measures, lockdowns of business, schools and overall social life, which have become commonplace to curtail the spread of the disease, have also disrupted many regular aspects of life, including sport and physical activity, according to UN. And professional baseball, like professional soccer, J-League, started late, uh, but the number of spectators limited 5,000 people, respectively, and all athletes and teams uh, got, have to get a PCR test. So this is the figure I just mentioned, that 59% uh, of people believe uh, Olympic Games should be canceled. This figure was appeared uh, uh, a month ago during the May. So still this trend is going on. However, um, the vaccination uh, is going well right now. The number of new infections with COVID-19 is declining right now, as you can see, which is driving the government to host the Olympic Games. That's the reason why government are so sure about holding the Olympic Games. And also vaccination is also increasing at an accelerating rate. And it's expected that more than 30% of the population will complete vac vaccination at the time of the Olympics. Uh, that is the next month. As vaccination progress, the percentage of people who oppose the Tokyo Games has decreased, but many people uh, want to know the spectators. Recently, an increasing number of people have been critical about IOC's stance of forcing the Tokyo Olympics to be held. So a lot of Japanese accusing IOC, hmm. why you guys force so much to host the Olympic Games? So. It's kind of a complicating situation. 
but the games must go on. The reason is simple. If the Tokyo Olympics are canceled, a loss of 45 billion US dollars will be required. That's too big to fail. And due to the influence of the corona disaster, it becomes impossible to rely the Olympic legacy in terms of inbound tourism without the country ambitions. But games must go on. I will explain about this later. Now, uh, to mascot, uh, you know, facing crisis, or maybe they are losing a job to be the mascot. Just, just joking. Mm -hmm. The number of inbound tourists increased steadily to 31.9 million until 2019. But in 2020, it decreased sharply to 4.1 million. The same thing happened in Korea and China. And forcing a major shift in the government's tourism policy. Uh, 2019, we got a 31.9 million, but it dropped drastically to 4.1 million. So we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So I'll give you just an example about the London Games back in 2012. Uh, 2012, the number of inbound tourists to, to UK, United King, Kingdom, is about uh, 32.5 million. But after the Olympic Games inbound uh, tourists, the number increased drastically. The, uh, after three years, by 2015, the number goes up to 36 million. So our government, or well, I personally believe this kind of trends can be possible if there is no COVID-19. So London 2012, so what they did was right after the games, they uh, hosted Commonwealth Games 2014, and they got Rugby World Cup in 2015, and the World uh, IWAF World Track and Field Championship in 2017. So number of people who participated in this event is very small, but there's a lot of audience come to England and a lot of our broadcasting, you know, change the image of uh, United Kingdom. Used to be dark, a lot of rain, people are not real reactive, you know, but after the games, the image of UK or London changed 180 degrees. It's a very um, sport city, you know, so people would like wanted to uh, visit to the UK. So that's what's happened after the 2012. So Tokyo Games could follow the example of the uh, uh, 2012, but it just didn't work. So now we have to start thinking about beyond the Tokyo 2020, what we're going to do after the uh, Olympic Games. So how will consumer market evolve after coronavirus? Travel industry covers health and wellness as core concept. And tourists focus on consumers' experience value, creating tourism products by redefining health and wellness and product commercialization of well-beings. So previous uh, speaker uh, said very similar things. So that kind of things we have to do as a legacy of the Olympic Games. So there's an organization called the JST, Japan Sport Tourism Alliance. I'm the chairman of this organization. And we have a sister uh, so recently, we are now focusing on two things. One is outdoor sport tourism. The other one is the budo tourism. Budo tourism, including a judo, kudo, kendo, and karate. So this is a, a very um, Japan, based on the Japan tradition. And uh, it's uh, attract to a lot of uh, foreigners, especially the people from Europe and the United States. So, and then we also have a, a organization called the Japan Health Tourism Organization. This is our sister organization. So we work closely together to promote sport and health tourism. And the uh, Japan Health Tourism Organization certify the health tourism uh, quality. So municipal government who would like to emphasize health tourism apply for uh, this organization to get the uh, guarantee 
of uh, providing the good health tourism contents. So if they pass or if they certify, they get they can use this mark to promote their program. So quite a few uh, municipal organizations already got to certify. And Japan Sport Tourism also encouraged municipal government to set up the organization called uh, Sport Commission. The main role of Sport Commission is to invite uh, sport training camp or sporting events like a marathon or a cycling event. And the uh, government, uh, by using sport agency to provide a lot of subsidy money. And uh, 10 years ago, there was no sports commission, but now we have a more than 150 sports commission, which promotes sport tourism all over Japan. So government action for economic recovery from dense sports. Japanese government is now focusing on vacation. Vacation is work and vacation. Have fun and ha work hard. So sports and health tourism, effective use of national parks and snow resort formation projects to restore the tourism industry. Now vacation is kind of a booming right now in Japan. And a lot of uh, area uh, who are facing uh, problems with uh, aging and uh, depopulation, but they have a, you know, a flow into natural resources and a nice hotel and resort. So they are now shifting their uh, marketing uh, target to the uh, workforce. Come to our city or town and then, uh, enjoy your work and enjoy your leisure. So work and leisure, work and play is a, a really interesting trends uh, in Japan right now. And also we have to uh, keep discussing of the effect of mega sporting events. So we will have, uh, we will host the 20th Asian games, which will be held in Japan in 2026 at uh, Aichi Prefecture and the city of Nagoya. Nagoya is the third largest city in Japan. And uh, I was the head of the planning committee of 2024 games. And uh, we set up the four goals to uh, realize the vision of Nagoya City using Asian Games as a catalyst of city development. Those are the four uh, goals. First, health, community, vitality, charm, pride, international exchange, diversity, and innovation, and sustainability. And uh, we use SDGs. This is the first uh, mega sporting event which use SDGs uh, as a, a, the, the, the side effect of the sporting events, like health and community vitality. We use 17, number 17, uh, the number three, in Charm Pride, we serve the 11 sustainable cities and the communities. So, so from now on, uh, this Asian Games has a really a, you know, clear objective to uh, as a, a catalyst of the city development. So we got a very clear uh, goal. And uh, Nagoya is also the headquarters of the Toyota uh, company. So we gonna use uh, their technology uh, such as uh, automatic driving uh, technology. So this is my final slides. Uh, searching for new online sporting events a6 holds a running event online in a relay marathon in the form of a relay race, team up with the friends and the family to compete six sections and uh, 42.195 kilometers uh, with a, a virtual Tasuki. So we're gonna uh, give Tasuki one runner to the other runner. Since it will be held virtually, it can be held anywhere. Anyone can participate in the other side of the world. The number of participants in the event was surprisingly uh, 13,602 teams and uh, 57,007 people from more than 179 countries. That tells you something. And in addition, the total running times was more than 27 hours and the total distance was, oh boy, uh, a lot of kilometers, and which is equivalent to uh, more than six laps of the Earth 
Anyway, so this kind of this kind of event tells you the future of the sport tourism. So we call hybrid sporting events. You know, you can uh, participate in in person, and at the same time, you can participate in online. So this kind of a uh, we are hoping that this kind of an event is going to be popular after the COVID-19 disaster. So that's all I want to say. I hope I made everything within the time. So thank you very much. Uh, President Harata, uh, thank you so much for keeping the time. Uh, as the chairman of Japan's Sports Tourism Alliance, uh, your speech on the, the sports tourism is very impressive, and your leading role over there uh, will have a significant impact in the future on the development of the tourism, especially uh, the link between the sports and tourism. And uh, I wish you a successful operation of the uh, Tokyo Olympic uh, this year, and also the Asian uh, Olympic uh, at Nagoya. In fact, I lived in Nagoya for one year as a Mumusho Fellow, so I have special <laughs> affiliation with um, uh, Nagoya. And uh, your SDGs will be uh, accomplished uh, in, in, in your area. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have the final uh, uh, discussion from China. Uh, he's the only uh, economist uh, in our panel today, and uh, his topic will be on the global, you know, finance area, uh, which look uh, not much related to uh, the, the uh, today's topic. But uh, the understanding of the global finance, you know, flow will help you in understanding what will be the future of the tourism industry. So I think that uh, as economists, uh, we'll talk about much on the uh, global finance topics, but uh, he may also make some note on the implications of the source change on the tourism industry. So this is uh, a bit different, you know, we are switching gear and we are looking at some macro issues and uh, how they will impact on the tourism industry. So this is another interesting uh, discussion, I guess. And pro Professor uh, uh, Chang Li is uh, a famous economist in China. Uh, his uh, PhD thesis was uh, chosen as the best uh, PhD destination uh, by the Ministry of uh, Education of China in 2010. So, uh, so we'll uh, invite uh, Professor Chang Li, uh, Chang Liu, uh, for his presentation on the global finance. Okay, so, okay, are you ready? Uh, he's from the uh, uh, sure. Nankai University. Okay. Uh, sure, thanks. Thanks, Professor Chung Yung Wu. And uh, can you hear the sharing, sharing pictures? Okay. You have uh, 15 minutes, okay? Yeah, yeah. So the sharing PPT is okay, right? Hello? You can go ahead, uh, it's very clear. Is it very clear? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, thanks, Pro Professor Yung Jung Wu and uh, Professor Han Jung Yung, Professor Harada and uh, Bing Dong Yung. Uh, it's my great honor to attend this conference, and uh, I first want to show my apology because I'm not very uh, expert in the tourism, but I want to give some opinion from international finance per per perspective. Uh, so the, to the topic is about uh, dollar liquidity shock and the new dilemma faced by the Fed and the implications for inclusive and sustainable tourism and trade prosperity in Asia. So uh, in the last year and 2020, uh, there, there comes a dollar shortage and a liquidity shock in the global financial market. So we want to know, is this shock simply rooted in the turbulence of pandemic or something others? Uh, why does the uh, cover interest parity devi deviate from the non-arbitrage equilibrium for a long time after 2008? And of, also other things about after the global financial crisis, the US and Europe has reduced their cross-border banking activities by tightening regulation. But why are they still unable to prevent the contagion of financial 
disorder in the pandemic crisis. So we propose a hypothesis of a new trilemma faced by the Fed. So what's the new trilemma's implication for inclusive and sustainable tourism and the trade prosperity in Asia? As for the time limitation, we, we have to go uh, concise and think, succinct. So we just pass the literature. Uh, as we know, uh, after uh, 1944, uh, the global world established a dollar system or do a dollar dominated international finance order. Uh, after nine, we have a picture uh, after 1968 and 1985, and also 2001 and 2017. From the IMF's estimation, we can see all the world is covered or dominant in the invoicing and the payment in US dollar. So in the, we can see most countries covered by the green color. The green color is dark, it's more dark, much darker, they use dollar more heavily. So till, until 2017, most of Asia area covered by the US dollars. That's not a very, uh, very good thing because as we know, in Korea, Japan and China, in recent years, the, the, the biggest trade partner is not US, but we rely heavily on US dollar. So we per, first, we give some stabilized fact and uh, give a mechani mechanism to explain this new trilemma and give some outlook. First, we can see this picture is very astonishing. So it can show the impact of tightening dollar liquidity during the pandemic crisis around the global market. Uh, this is this part. Uh, this part of the picture is from uh, March of 2020s. Uh, we can zoom in to see this one. So this picture is uh, about a violation of uh, CIP. What is CIP? CIP is a central equation in economics and the related literature can be traced back to uh, 100 years ago, like Keynes 1923. So, so far as to state the CIP works on a physical law in international finance. This equation, this e equation here, is just simply say, uh, the interest rate differential between two currencies should be perfectly reflect in the foreign exchange price. Uh, all we can see simply in the normal time, it should be zero, like this, like this one before 2008. It's a US dollar and a, uh, a United Kingdom sterling uh, FX swap. It should be zero. But after 2008, we see the violation hugely. And also in 2020 pandemic crisis like this. Before the financial crisis of 2008, deviation from the CIP were generally minimal and short lived. Uh, cross currency basis swap for G10 currency pairs tend to trade close to zero. A notable exception to this rule is uh, 2008, and uh, most recently, it's last year. Um, also, we can see something from a career one in this picture. If we zoom in, we can see this blue line, this blue line, that's, that is Korean one. So in, in the March of 2020, we can see a astonishing phenomenon of Korean one. The FX swap differential is about 300, about 300 basis points. Remember, remember normally it should be zero. Uh, normally it should be zero, but now it's a uh, 300 basis point. That can drive, drive many banks and the corporates go to default or bankruptcy. It's very dangerous because everybody wants dollar, but in that time, the dollar liquidity is, is dry. Also in US dollar to euro 
also US dollar to Japanese yen, there also happens the, the dangerous things like this. So at the height of funding squeeze in mid-March 2020, a uh, foreign exchange war spread indicate a scramble for US dollars, like the situation during the uh, global financial crisis in 2008 and the euro era debt crisis in 2011. The cost of US dollar funding uh, grow arise about 85 or 2, 150 basis points. In Korea one is about 300, very striking. The situation was even extreme for some other currencies. Uh, so that's the, that's the thing. So in contrast to the Japanese banking crisis, however, the financial crisis of 2008 was not country specific. Instead, all G10 currency peers involving in the US dollar shocking experienced sharp and volatile CIP deviations. So that, that's not a good thing. Also, we can see other economies uh, like emerging economies, also developed economies. This decade, Europe also experienced a 150 basis point huge cost arising. That, that's uh, UK sterling. So, uh, as in the past period of string in US dollar funding liquidity, the FX swap market which served as an important alternative funding source, came under pressure hugely. On 19th March, the Fed further announced an expansion of swap land network to nine additional cent uh, central banks, uh, which have been offering US dollar liquidity in operations since the end of March. But that is not a sustainable solution, we should remember. Since uh, because the Fed and the other central banks are losing control of their balance sheet. What that means? That means they lose control of financial discipline. Or, but, but that just the financial discipline losing caused the global financial crisis 2008. So we should remember that. If we continue to rely on dollar, US dollar heavily, we cannot uh, prevent the, from time to time the global financial crisis. After uh, global fin after global financial crisis 2008 in the U.S. money market, the uh, sovereign have effectively crowded out private banks in money market onshore, and that is also inevitable in money market offshore. The euro dollar market is a private system and. Uh, historically tight relationship between onshore and offshore funding curves. The euro dollar OIS, labor and FX swap curves were all on top of each other. The widening spread between labor and OIS and the labor FX swaps will reflect a structural breakdown of power exchange rate between onshore dollars and the euro dollars, just as the crisis of 2008. So that's the problem. We give up a uh, hypothesis to explain the problem. That is a trilemma, new trilemma. For the time limitation, I just uh, skip some uh, slides. So we just go through the mechanism. It's because the Fed faced a new trilemma that from time to time, global financial markets how to experience global financial crisis, also in Asia area. The new trilemma is uh, about uh, three goals, three policy goals. One is US monetary policy goal, desirable inflation. For example, now the, the Fed wants to keep the inflation down. The other goal is a uh, cent global central bank functions because the Fed is not only the domestic central bank for US, it also is the global central bank for every country. So he have to keep the offshore and onshore dollar parity, keep going close to each other. Uh, so the basic point should close to zero, not 300 points. 
the last one goal, the last goal is financial discipline. That means the Fed should have a stable balance sheet, also a desirable leverage for all the banking and uh, non-banking system. But the three goals, the Fed have to always give up one of them. The regulation reform turns the dollar's exorbitant privilege into a trilemma, uh, which typically associated with emerging market economies with fixed exchange rate to the US dollar. That uh, that's, is very abnormal. According to the traditional impossible trinity, it's only possible to have two of three goals, free capital mobility, a fixed foreign exchange rate, and a monetary policy oriented toward domestic goals. But now, the US Fed, he now faced the impossible trinity in a new form. It is impossible to have constraints on bank balance sheet in this one, in the C point. You have one minute. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I will, I will keep concise. So, uh, so eight, the reform, the domain of governor have latent in the balance sheet quantity and driving a wedge between the price of onshore and offshore dollars. And uh, the quantitative euro dollar easing for the rise of the world is the solution, which is President, President Dudley's dummy. So if the increasing cost of the US dollars is what's driving appreciation of the dollar, uh, that will come to the dollar shock also. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to the conclusion. So in the short run, uh, we have to prepare a unified regulation based on market realities, uh, which means the macro potential financial regulation. From bank-based finance regulation to market-based finance regulation, and also from banking to non-banking and non-financial corporate. Also, we should take all the foreign exchange swap back to the banking's balance sheet. So that will make the regulation more complete. So in the long run, what we should do, we should uh, make a currency pyramid reconstruction. That means a new international monetary system for inclusive and sustainable trade prosperity. Asia, Asia countries should co cooperate each other. Uh, for, event, for example, Japan, Korea, and China, they should make some, uh, they should use more Japanese in Korean won and also uh, Chinese RMB. In the future, we should build Asia currency, like Euro dollar, which will uh, which will provide hugely support for the Asia intra regional, regional trade service and also the productions. That will prevent us from time to time financial crisis. So, uh, I think I think from this we can uh, co uh, cooperate with each other. The Korea, Japan, and China should cooperate to build the sustainable and. Uh, uh, proper regional uh, payment system uh, that will help to uh, keep the Asia's prosperity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, very shocking that uh, we may have de de developed a new international monetary system, and uh, uh, he really uh, provided uh, the new pyramid of the uh, the you know foreign currency. And so uh, maybe we can expect some uh, Asian uh, monetary system that is comparable to Euro in the future. So that is very uh, uh, innovative suggestions and uh, we'll see what would happen in the future. Okay, uh, we have only uh, six minutes to go and uh, maybe uh, we can invite some questions from the floor to any panelist and uh, uh, the main speaker. So maybe you can utilize about five minutes for, uh, uh, and I'll give the, to the, uh, the open floor for your Q and A. So any questions from the floor or any questions from the, the online? So anybody wants to make some questions to uh, the three uh, panelists or the main speaker? Okay, yes, please, uh, Professor Tao. Uh, thank you. 
uh, today we talk about the cooperation uh, among the three countries, or Northeast uh, Asian countries. Uh, uh, we know that uh, we face the uh, pandemic. Uh, I think the uh, tourism uh, includes two uh, aspects. One is the just the go abroad to see very good views, and another one is the business uh, travelers. And I think the business travelers is uh, very important because it is not only uh, for the uh, traveler industry, but also for other industries uh, because business travelers, they connected uh, many industries uh, uh, between countries. So I think it is very important for them to go abroad, go to other countries very conveniently. Uh, <laughs> Somebody has uh, talked about the uh, passport, one, one kind of passport. Uh, if one people already <laughs> has uh, uh, what? Uh, va vaccine? Vaccinated. Uh, if one person is already vaccinated, uh, these people can get a, a vaccine passport. Mm -hmm. That will be very uh, conveniently yeah. for one person to go other countries. Yeah. Okay. But this this uh, this thing uh, need cooperation uh, between countries okay. or among countries. All right. uh, my question is, what should we do to call for this passport for the governments? Uh, maybe a Korean government, a Chinese government, or Japanese government. What should we do to call for it? Thank okay. you. So, any uh, discussion or, or, or the presenter can answer to his question about the vaccine passport. Anybody who is willing to, uh, uh, how to we can cooperate among the three different countries to make this uh, vaccine passport a viable option? Any, yeah. Uh, Mr. Byung, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I think I'm the only, I'm answering to you because I'm the only person who is on the field. Or, or, or we are having a lot of distinguished professors here, but I'm in the real field. So that's why I decided to answer you. Actually, it is one of the most delicate issue now. So our daily life in our real tourism field, the vaccinated passport issue is becoming bigger and bigger. Um, I don't think we can, just only Korea can do anything. I don't think we can do anything on this. So far, I think European countries and also US countries, we need at least for the very standardized uh, system, which we can scan someone's passport. And also it has been avoided any kind of fake. So we need to develop, we need more time to go through. So that's why it has been delayed and delayed. So the only thing what we can do in here as a kind of a three countries, uh, just a private sectors talk, I think uh, we may propose some idea together and keep on asking to the maybe UNWTO or some uh, kind of government in the, the Western countries so we need to make a kind of one big opinion. But as we know, I think it is one of the most extremely difficult process procedure. Uh, it, sometimes it is very negative uh, part we can achieve today or tomorrow. It will take a time. Question? Okay. Uh, maybe Professor, oh, oh yes, uh, yes. Uh, Harada, Professor Harada, yes. Do you have a question? Have a yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, you hear me? very well. Okay. Yeah, very well. Um, in Japan, we um, we accommodate nine Olympic athletes uh, from Uganda last week. And uh, according to their health record, they already got uh, vaccinated twice and uh, before the flight, negative. And after they got uh, Japan, uh, they got a negative. But uh, two days after, two people got the positive. So what I'm saying is that uh, vaccine passport, at this moment, we cannot trust that because it's very easy to go through 
the you know uh, the PCR uh, the, the inspection. So do not trust the vaccine passport 100 percent. Okay, thank you for your real field ex you know experience. Okay, uh, very interesting observation. Thank you so that so much. Okay, we have just a 20. Two seconds, <laughs> so let me let me round up uh, this session here, and uh, I appreciate the uh, the the great uh, presentations by three discussants and one main speaker, and I appreciate for your cooperation, and also I appreciate the audience uh, in the field, and also I have the special thanks to uh, uh, President uh, Kim of the Halla uh, Jeju University. Uh, for providing this uh, forum for us. Thank you, uh, uh, President uh, Kim. Okay, so let me finish it here. Yes, thank you very much. Please give a big applause to moderator and speakers once again. Yes, that concludes this session. From now on, we will be taking a short break. Um, 잠시 휴식 시간을 갖고 3시 20분부터는 외교부에서 주관하는 P4G 정상회의 결과 및 COP26을 향한 노력이라는 주제로 세션이 시작될 예정입니다. 어, 이로써 이번 세션을 모두 마무리하겠습니다. 참석해 주셔서 감사합니다. 잠시 후 뵙겠습니다.